All right, everybody, today we're gonna to be building this table base here out of CNC plasma cut steel, and we're gonna brass plate all of the welds, grinds, and other exposed raw steel for that kind of steampunky modern industrial look. Let's go. Alrighty y'all, like a lot of projects, we're gonna start over at the plasma table. We're loading up a sheet of 3 16ths here. It's a little heavier than is, you know, comfortable to move around by hand. You gotta watch pinching your fingers here. So I've actually recently invested in some magnets to make this a little bit easier. But after firing up that HTP Microcut 875, we get to cutting. I'm gonna run this clip at regular volume. And that was just so that you guys could hear the sound that a uh, plasma torch is going to make as your consumables burn out. Normally I, I see it coming before I actually have a burnout. Uh, the sound changes a little bit, you get a little bit more sparks on the top of the plate. But with 316s you get sparks anyway, so it's just kind of the name of the game. I don't cut a lot of 316s, most of what I do is 10 gauge and lighter, but what are you going to do? So we're cleaning up the dross left over from the cut. I don't think my settings for 3 16ths are perfect. I've got a video right here in the cards on our process for removing dross, but it's basically knock the big chunks off with a cold chisel by hand and then jump over to a wire brush to knock off pretty much 99%. Uh, and then if you need to, uh, if it's gonna be something that people are gonna touch, you can come back with a flap disc and clean up all the edges, kind of deburr them a little bit. I'm going to get both sides, and I like to just do the whole surface of the piece when it's, especially if it's something small like this, just makes everything nicer to, to feel. The wire brush kind of points out any mistakes. Then we're over to the flap disc, and you'll see that by changing the angle I'm holding the tool at continuously as I move around curves, I'm always attacking the cut with at the same angle from the disc. I'm always leading into it with like that 20-ish degree angle. And that just gives you a nice, consistent, very small bevel or fillet to those edges. Now we're gonna be welding this long seam here all the way down, and that plasma cut edge is gonna give you a little porosity in the weld. So I'm taking the time to remove the plasma mill scale, the, the bluing from the cut. So I'm back down to fresh raw steel. It's just gonna make that weld nicer later on. With the table cleaned off, we're gonna jump into actually doing the wrapping or channeling or I don't know what to call it here. The idea that I discussed with the customer was to make kind of a faux I-beam. So we're using this 3 16 plate and we're gonna wrap it with two inch steel, which means we need a spacer of just over seven eighths of an inch on either side of the 3 16 to make it center up. So we're going to take a piece of three-quarter inch square tube, add a piece of eighth inch flat bar, and let those welds run a little bit sloppy, which will get us right there on that, you know, what is it, a 30 second over 7 eighths, 29, 30 seconds, something like that. And um, by just dropping those spacers in after cutting them apart, it uh, just makes this part of it go a lot faster. This first one, we're gonna struggle with a little bit. It was a learning process. I'd done similar before, but this piece was rather large and you know, a combination of a real tight curve on the edges there and then this big arch in the center was difficult. A number of the curves needed to be, let's go with refined with some hammer blows, but with this eighth of an inch strapping, you can do that. It's not gonna put a flat spot in the strapping unless you're really laying into it with the hammer. So as we worked our way through the curve, liberally applying clamps, I found that taking the piece and just tacking it down to my work table was a great way to make it easier to work on. It held it in place, held it vertical, and those tacks are going to be where the eventual long weld is. So they'll be covered up you won't see them, and of course the table recovers pretty easily. Dude, what is up with this wire? It's all buttery and shit? Yeah, yeah. it's super weird. 
Yeah, that was happening to me yesterday, too. It's a company that wanted to sponsor it, too. Oh, yeah. It's a shitty wire. Yeah, so when we are exploring a sponsorship with the company, we actually test their products out ahead of time. And if they're crappy, we turn the sponsorship down. This is one. I'm not going to say who it is because I might just have a bad batch. If I go by the store and buy something and it doesn't work, it doesn't make it on video. Okay, you just got to run this wire like two volts hot and then it works. Yeah, you're not heavy enough. I don't think I am either. So of course, the downside to tacking the workpiece to the table is I can't clamp from the side that's tacked to the table. Uh, it'd be a great time to have a fab table with a bunch of holes in it, but I don't have one of those. So we're jumping over to something I've done in the past. We're just going to make a little spreader bar, and then I'll take some half-inch threaded rod, just some scraps we have. We always keep those, and we'll tack those right to the table, run some nuts down them, and then this little spreader bar becomes a clamp, and it worked beautifully. The clamping force on those nuts is a lot, and... It just pulled everything into place exactly where I wanted it. The cleanup's pretty easy. It's just cut them off, grind the table flat again, and we're good to go there. You know, this is one of the reasons that I say that being a fabricator is much more difficult than being a welder. You know, Tommy's got a mind for fabrication, and I've taught him how to weld. I'd much rather do that than take a welder and teach them how to fabricate. Uh, I just think it's a different skill set and one that's harder to learn. Outside of the technical welding trades, welding's just hot glue with a bad attitude. And that's what we're using it. We're attaching these pieces of metal. We've got to work our way out of this curve. Fortunately, that's easier to do than working our way in. I'm not going to run you guys through the whole process because I'm pretty sure you get where we're going here. Once we get the big inside curve all tightened up, the outside curve isn't going to be as difficult. We just pop off the piece from the table, bend around the curve, a couple more clamps, get it all attached, and we're good to go. All right. So those welds should pull. Oh, they pulled all the warp back out of it. Look at that. That thing's just about dead on square. That's cute. Huh? That's different. That is different. Now I'm going to build another one. Yeah. The same. <laughs> <laughs> Building multiples of something can be a bit rough. You know, you're doing the same thing all over again, and that's tedious. But at the same time, you're getting to use the experience from the first round, think about what you're doing a little bit, and come up with a better way to get it done the second time. Like clamping the piece in the center here to put that big center arch in. Well, hot damn, that worked a lot better. Just like with the first piece, we're going to be using a liberal application of clamping force to make the two inch strapping match the curve. But with that big center arch set by the center clamp, this was much easier. It's also easier to do the small radiuses at the end, probably just because we were using a you know smaller piece of metal, less to have to wrestle into place. The first one took Tommy and I more than two hours to get right. It was pretty slow going as we figured it out. This second one we did in less than 20 minutes and you know that's just how it goes. You get better over time. With the two sides completed and a small angle cut at the edge of the strapping, we're going to clamp them together with these 90 degree clamps and I actually ran them just a little bit loose or tight I guess. It was about an 88 degree angle on the inside and you do that just by manually adjusting them in the clamps so that I can turn around and weld that entire outside seam in one long pass and have the warp from that big weld pull that angle back to a true 90. This is 3 16 inch steel. I'm running somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 inches a minute at like 22 volts on the HDP Pro Pulse 220 MTS just laying into it. My glove was very hot by the end of it. But you flip it over, do the same thing on the inside except I took two passes on this one because again that glove was pretty hot. The whole point of doing long welds like that is just so you get a nice clean look. I also wasn't especially worried about the spatter because we're going for that steampunky industrial look and it kind of adds to it. 
but we did take the wire brush across the whole surface just to clean it up and remove anything that was loose, which was probably 80 to 90 percent of this batter. Then we took the piece out to the customer's location, just A for a test fit and B to make sure that we're on the same page as far as the look. Sometimes you want to see it in person and not just work off a render from the computer. Alright, so now that we're back from the customer approving the look and design of the table base, we're going to set to making it pretty and doing our final finish. Speaking of looking pretty, alright guys. Forget all that can crap I was going to tell you about from the shop. Before we jump into how you can win a pair of these pants, let me tell you a little bit about them and the company that's selling them. These are FXD work pants. They're like a modern cargo pant, super comfortable. They're cotton, so you don't have to worry about them not performing when you're welding. I've got a couple big pockets on this side where I keep my wallet and phone. All my tools over on the right hand side because I'm right handed. I don't like anything in my back pocket. but. What you really want out of a review, or at least what I do, is not how pretty was it out of the box, but how did it perform? So I've been wearing this specific pair of pants for about two months now, pretty much every day. And they're holding up great. I don't have a single hole in them anywhere. You know, even though they're khaki, they clean up really well. And I kind of like this look that it's given me for a uniform for the shop. I think we're going to adopt it khaki on black. Now, Great Lakes, they're a multi-generational American company curating a selection of some of the best workwear out there. Bryce, the guy running everything over there, gets it. Ship a high quality product quickly at a good price. I can't find these pants anywhere online for cheaper than they're selling them. And good guys, they're based out of Niagara Falls, super happy with them. I was just up there because I was in the area. So let's jump over to Bryce and he'll tell you how you can win a pair of these. So there'll be a link in the description here. Uh, just fill out a quick survey and then uh, we'll do one every week or something like that. So your second generation? Second generation. Thanks for having me out, man. Yeah, it's been fun. So thanks again to Great Lakes Workwear. They're a great group of guys up there and I'm looking forward to working with them in the future. So in the project, we're going to jump back in and basically just clean up all the welds as far as making them look pretty and even. Anywhere we had a tack, we're going to want to stretch that out to an inch, inch and a half or so of stitch weld, make those relatively even and consistent across the whole piece. This is of course overkill, you don't need this much weld to hold that strapping in place, but for aesthetics, we're going to do it. Again, we're working off the ProPulse 220 MTS from HDP, great machine, and even with this kind of weird wire we had in there, it's performing, you know, just fine here. I love when I'm working on heavier plate, y'all have heard me say this before, you know, in, in my world, 3 16ths is pretty heavy plate when we're doing a whole lot of 16, 18 gauge type of stuff. So, having something that we can just kind of lay a weld into is always nice. You'll see here the, the finished product. These are not going to be, you know, amazingly visible, but we want the welds to be consistent and straight and as even as possible, which is why where we could, we're going to take like a whole corner in one pass. Speaking of corners, we're going to clean up the corner where the two side profiles meet at the top and bottom. That two inch strapping was in the original design finished out with uh, being knocked off at like a 45 degree angle. But in talking about it with the customer and looking at the finished piece, we both decided that it would look better if it was rounded off. So we're getting ready to do that. First thing we had to do was make sure those profiles are nice and straight and in plane so it'll sit even on the floor, it'll sit even under the table it's gonna support. That was pretty much just tap it into place with a hammer and grind everything flush. Then we tag in a piece of two inch flat bar, just scrap from the original pieces, and weld that out. To match up with the kind of industrial look, we're gonna leave the weld, not grind it flush, but we are gonna round that corner off just by hand, first grinding with a cutoff wheel and then cleaning it up with a fiber disc. So here's where experimenting in the shop comes into play. The normal way to finish a piece like this, if it wasn't going to go get powder coated or painted, would be wire brush everything off, clean it with acetone just like we're doing here, and then move over to a paste wax or lacquer finish, something like that. But the customer was interested in experimenting with this. I was interested in experimenting with this. 
So we decided that we were going to brass plate anywhere that you're not seeing the mill scale finish of the steel, that blue or dark gray color. The way we're going to do that is basically just heating the pieces up very precisely and then rubbing a brass bristle brush on them. Initially we tried to do that with a map gas torch but it just wasn't getting the piece hot enough fast enough in a concentrated area so we switched over to the oxyacetylene torch. Now me having a torch is going to bring up the question of why didn't I use that when doing bends earlier on and there's two reasons. The first is when you're heating things up with a torch, you've then got to wait for them to cool down, kind of slows everything down. And two, I like to show that you can do most of what I do without some of the fancier tools. You know, you don't have to have a torch to put a two inch radius bend on some strapping. So that's why we do it the way we do. But back to the finishing. This is a little bit of a difficult one to film just because we're working very time sensitively with you know things needing to be done at just the right temperature. So I'm going to jump around here a bit with the camera and yes I have picked a cold up so sorry about my nasally voice. The basic idea is get a weld or the ground seam or edge of any of the pieces just shy of of red hot uh, just where it starts to glow just a little bit and then as it cools I'm doing the heating Tommy's doing the brushing with this brass brush the brass from those bristles will transfer off onto the piece I'll have a link down in the description to these specific brushes it was hard to find ones that were 100% brass um, and we did use both little handheld brushes and some drill attachment pieces that help me get into the corners. Now, as you'll see, this was tedious. This was a, a, an experiment for me, and I learned some stuff along the way. Hopefully you guys can skip some of those lessons, but this took about three times as long as I thought it was going to. Tommy and I spent the better part of about three hours working our way around this piece, figuring out the temperatures that we needed to get things to based on the color, because that's really the only um, indication we have there. But the finished piece was, was pretty nice. Tommy would chase me around as we heated everything up, got everything just right, and yeah, like I said, the, the finished piece was, was pretty nice, I think. It, it's a pretty interesting look. Uh, definitely could be refined a little bit more, but the the look fits where we're going for and where this piece is going to end up being eventually. The showroom that it's going in has lots of brasses and golds and other uh, pewter type finishes. So having this play between the mill scale and the brass was a uh, a cool look, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. With the brass plating all wrapped up, the only thing left to do is punch in a couple holes for the tabletop this will eventually support. Then we're going to run around with some acetone, clean everything off, get any oil or soot off of it, and then use some clean paste wax to coat the whole surface. This is going to be interior, so that will hold up great. And you can buff it out to whatever finish you want, whether matte or like a semi-gloss. Then we'll deliver it. The customer wanted to install themselves, so let's jump over to the finished product. Alrighty, y'all, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit subscribe. If you want to jump into the numbers, the behind the scenes, and see how I actually bid the project like this, go ahead and check out Patreon. There'll be a video right here from YouTube that the algorithm thinks you might like. And until next time, thanks for stopping by.